Hi guys, how's it going? Fred here from AF Math and Engineering, and we're moving along through the course. We're moving through Strengths and Materials 2. Uh, we just finished torsion, so we did all different types of torsion, and twisting, and bending of shafts, and now we're going to move into bending moment diagrams. Now, if you'll remember from our Strengths 1 material, we already went over this. Uh, we went over calculating reactions. We went over uh, the method of cutting the beam in different sections in order to solve for uh, the internal forces in the beam, okay? Um, we're not going to do that now. Uh, we're going to do a little more complicated uh, styles of beams, but I'm going to show you the much faster way of solving a bending, bending moment diagram and drawing it. It's going to save you 30 to 40 minutes on your final exam when you write uh, this question. And uh, honestly, uh, in this course, you're not going to have time to, uh, to do it with the equations, there's, there's way more room for error using that method. So with that being said, uh, let's get into it. Now, uh, right here, we have a, a, a beam that's being subjected to different loads. We have two distributed loads, uh, one of 10 kilonewton per meter on the left between A and B, and one 40 kilonewton per meter between C and D. Okay, we have two supports in the question. We have a roller support, you can't really see it, uh, it's at B, and we have a pin support at D, okay? We also have a free moment of 20 kilonewton meters at point E, okay? And that's pretty much it. So, now what's the question asking? We're gonna solve a bunch of different questions. This is gonna be a probably six or seven part series. We're gonna do the moment of inertia, we're gonna solve the flexural stresses from this beam. Uh, but right off the bat, what do we need to do first? What's the first step in solving or in, in drawing any bending moment diagram? We need to solve for the reactions, right? We need to solve for the reactions at B, we need to solve for the reactions at D. So I've taken the liberty of just drawing a free body diagram of the forces acting on the beam. Now I would suggest every time you do this, you do it exactly like this. This is the, I think, in my opinion, and I had a great amount of success with these types of questions when I did this course, uh, I would draw it like this every single time, uh, draw it as a straight line and draw each distributed load as a singular point load. So resolve that into its load by simply multiplying 10 kilonewton per meter by the, the length that it spans across and it acts in the center. Okay, so you, you resolve those, the free moment stays the same and you write by and dy in terms of their, you know, their vector forces acting on the beam. And this is going to really allow you to work neatly, work cleanly, and not make as many mistakes. And after you're gonna see, we're gonna, going to calculate the reactions and we're gonna extend this with the same dimensions and the same scale down into our uh, shear moment diagram. And your professor's gonna look at it and they're gonna love it. It's gonna be to scale, it's gonna look great. And they're gonna mark it easier than if some person just came in and freehand drew some not to scale diagram, okay? So looks are important here. So let's begin solving the reactions for the beam. Now let's start it at point D. Now if you'll recall from strengths one, when we solve for the reactions, we could take the moment at D and then solve for the forces in the Y, but never do that, okay? As you're just asking to make a mistake, okay? If you do it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the moment about D, we're gonna take the moment about B, and the sum of those two should equal the total sum of all external forces acting on the beam, and that's how we check if we did our reactions correctly, because if we do our reactions wrong, as you know, every single step of the question past this point will be wrong, and we don't want that, do we? All right, so let's start at point D, and let's start by taking the moment about point D, and we'll refer to our free body diagram, okay? So we're going to take the moment around D and we're going to assign counterclockwise as positive. That's the standard convention in these kind of problems. And let's just start. So we have 480 newton, kilonewtons acting six meters to the left of DY. And that's positive. Okay. We have a free moment, which is negative, And there's no distance there, obviously. Free moment acts anywhere on the beam. So we can subtract that straight up. Okay, what do we have here? We have a negative moment, by, right? It's going clockwise. And how far is that away? Well, that is 22 meters, right? And finally, we have that 100 kilonewton singular force here. That's positive. Okay, and that is 
27 meters from dy, and that's equal to zero because the sum of the moments equals zero, the beam is in equilibrium. Okay. Now all we have to do is just solve for by. Right, so that's what we get, okay? Um, now all we need to do next is solve for the moment at B. Now, I do like to, when I get this number here, I like to just put it straight into my free body diagram. That way I'm not looking around and, and I'm not confused as to what exactly is going on. Okay, so. Let's take the moment about B. What do we have? So we have over here, we have a positive 100 kilonewton force. That is five meters. So we have 100 times five. This 100 kilonewton concentrated load times the distance five from BY. Okay, we have again, the negative 20 kilonewton meter moment, free moment. We have a 480 kilonewton moment, and that's also negative. And that is 16 meters from by, right, this distance here. Finally, we have dy, that's positive, okay? And that is 10 plus 12, which is 22 meters from by. That's all equal to zero, okay? So solving for dy, we arrive at a value of 327.27 kilonewtons, okay? All right, and we're gonna write that right in here. All right, now, what did I mean before about the sum of the moments equaling the external forces? This is a great way to check. Guys, you gotta do this. If you're ever solving a bending moment diagram in a test, it might make sense initially to just take the sum of all the forces and solve for dy, but that, that method is completely wrong, and if your initial reaction was wrong, this one will be wrong, and there's no way to tell and you'll continue with the whole question. You'll see this question is gonna be six or seven videos long. You're gonna get a zero. So all we have to do, it's a very simple check. We're going to actually, let's look at our free body diagram first and we're gonna add the external forces acting. So we have 480 plus 100 kilonewtons and that should be equal to the sum of by and dy, okay? So we have 327.27, 252.73, Okay, and I'm just gonna get my calculator out here, just to double check. And as we see, 580 is equal to 580. That is correct. And that's a good check. So now we know that our reactions are correct and we can continue on to the next part of the question, which is going to be drawing the bending moment diagram.